It eyes its quarry with unwavering focus. Then it executes a dive of exquisite skill and precision. Kingfishers span the globe, inhabiting every continent except for Antarctica. To find one, look to your nearest creek, river, coast, or lagoon. They need calm, clear water to locate fish. But not all kingfishers are piscivorous. Kookaburras are terrestrial kingfishers and rarely eat fish. Instead, they consume small lizards, snakes, mice, insects, and worms. Kingfishers are in the family Alcidinidae. Included in that are 117 species, 3 subfamilies, and 18 genera. You can break down the three subfamilies like this. First, there are the river kingfishers, such as the common kingfisher. They are located in the Old World and primarily dive for fish. Then, you have the water kingfishers, such as the belted kingfisher. They are in the New World and also dive for fish. Lastly, you have the tree kingfishers, like the kookaburras. They are woodland dwelling and have little association with waterways. They reside primarily in Australia. Now, that's not to say that there aren't fishing kingfishers in this part of the world, as some of the river kingfishers can be found there too, such as this azure kingfisher. The shape of a kingfisher is distinctive. A stocky body, large head, and a hefty pointed beak give them away. Some also have a shaggy crest. Notice also that they have small feet, short wings, and a short tail. Interestingly, in the belted kingfisher, it is the females who are more brightly colored than the males, with a rust-colored band across the front. Scientists have hypothesized different reasons for this plumage reversal, but they still aren't sure why it exists. In the common kingfisher, males and females are identical, except that the male has a solid black beak, whereas the female has orange-red coloring on the lower mandible. The male pied kingfisher has two bands across the front, and the female has a single band that is broken in the middle. The sounds of different kingfishers are as diverse as is their species. The call of the laughing kookaburra has been used as a stock sound effect in jungle scenes and movies, such as the Tarzan series in the 1930s and Jurassic Park in 1997. These birds inhabit the eucalypt forests of Australia, but their calls have been used in scenes of the jungles of Asia, Africa, and the Americas. Having a tough week? Well, there's a kookaburra for that. Just one listen to this monkey-like call coming out of a bird, will probably make you laugh, or at least crack a smile. <laughs> the belted kingfisher of North America is sometimes more easily heard than seen. When near a stream or river, listen to their characteristic rattling or ratchet sound. The common kingfisher of Europe, Asia, and Africa has a sound that is completely different and much more sing-song and delicate than the previous two.
kingfishers make their mark when it comes to unique avian feet. They have a toe arrangement known as syndactyly. Syndactyl feet means that they have three toes in the front and one in back, but the second and third digits are fused together for part of their length. Many excavate earthen burrows along riverbanks and others nest in tree cavities. They may use old woodpecker holes or excavate their own nest hole in soft or rotted wood. The fused digit offers a broader sole and makes for a more powerful, robust digging tool. Of course, their strong beaks offer assistance here as well. For those who burrow into earth, they dig long tunnels anywhere from 1 to 8 feet deep with a nest chamber at the end where the eggs will be laid. Both the male and female participate in raising the young. Most kingfishers are sit-and-wait predators, either from a perch, as we've already seen, or by hovering in mid-air. While hovering, they keep their head and torso in a fixed position and the body is tilted. Most of the lift is generated during the downstroke, so the body moves upwards. The tilt of the body reduces drag during the upward motion of the cycle. Hovering is the most energy consumptive, so why do they do it? Hovering frees the kingfisher from the need to be perched on vegetation in order to see prey, thus greatly extending their foraging offshore. And second, being in the air allows them to quickly reposition themselves to improve detection of prey due to the visually complex air-water interface. Being perpendicular to the fish may reduce some of these optical problems. The downside is that hovering makes their silhouette more visible to fish due to Snell's law. This is a 96 degree cone of light where optical distortions are minimal. When a kingfisher dives from a perch, it often bobs its head periodically while staring at the water. This helps it gauge the position and depth of prey before committing to a dive. It pierces the water surface with the precision of an Olympic diver, with minimal to no splashing. Its ability to move seamlessly from low resistance in the air to high resistance in the water inspired a team of Japanese engineers. The goal was to redesign the front of the high-speed bullet trains to reduce the noise of tunnel sonic booms. Using the Kingfisher's beak as a model, they were able to successfully redesign the train so that they were quieter and could even go faster. It's worth mentioning that the head engineer was also an avid bird watcher and member of the Wild Bird Society of Japan. It goes without saying that these birds are nothing short of remarkable, with adaptations that would impress any physicist. What kind of kingfishers do you have in your area? Please let me know in the comments section down below. Thank you for watching. That's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.